I welcome you all to this interaction meeting of 2000 batch of IAS with Honorable President of India. And we are grateful that he has spared time from his busy schedule to meet with the IAS officer trainees. Sir, today 183 officer trainees are present here. Of these, 178 officers are from the 2000 batch of IAS, two are from the 2012 IAS batch, and three belong to Royal Bhutan Civil Service. Sir, as you may be aware, IAS officers undergo two years of induction training before assuming their first professional responsibility as STM in the field. The main objective of this training is to provide an overview of the public administration to the fresh entrants and to help develop esprit de corps amongst officers of different services. Sir, we are honored that they have this opportunity to interact with you today and learn from your vast and varied experiences in public life. Sir, your words of wisdom and advice will act as a constant source of inspiration for these young officers throughout their career and will motivate them to perform their duties with integrity, devotion, and professionalism. On behalf of the Academy, I welcome you and thank you for your time, sir. Sir, it is my proud privilege to talk to you about a collective experience of a very special journey through the expanse of India called Bharat Darshan or the Winter Study Tour. Lawrence Durrell once said, travel can be the most rewarding form of introspection. And so, sir, a batch of 180 IS officers and three officers from the Royal Bhutan Civil Services were divided in these 10 groups and were designated routes to experience administration in all its manifestations. I feel Bharat Darshan has a threefold objective. One, to feel India. Now, we have traveled through India in, a, in, in our capacity throughout our lives. But this time it was like breathing India. So I think we, we felt India much better. Two, learning from the people who are actually making a difference on the field. And three, teamwork and leadership. When you're thrown in this diverse travel group, it's teamwork which starts building up. So these are the three objectives which we undertook while we were on the Bharat Darshan. During this tra travel, the expectations of the people were right on our face. Uh, we were seen as change agents raring to go. The feeling itself brought a new reality which was different from the classes and training in the academy. These all formed part of an experiential learning and it would remain in our subconscious mind which will in some way affect our reason and beliefs when we are in prominent positions or critical positions in our districts. Meeting you and seeing you sir once again, especially at the precincts of the most prized award in this country, it is indeed an honor. It is indeed an icing on the cake for our tour to end on this note. Kindly bless us for our future, sir. Thank you. Henry Miller once said, one's destination is never a place, but a new way of seeing things. Just as Swami Vivekananda undertook a long journey across the length and breadth of the country for over three years in search of the soul of India, just as Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, a young barrister, found a new destination in India's freedom struggle after having travelled to every nook and corner of the country. We have realised that travel has in it an immense potential to transform. At the end of eight weeks of travel and togetherness, we have not only witnessed some of the harsh realities out there, but also unravelled the true all-embracing Indian in each one of us. It has been a process of making India our own in several ways, in our own unique ways. Lest we forget, we also had a helicopter vision of the enormity of responsibilities that we as administrator are to take on tomorrow. To conclude, the timeless Rumi says, travel brings love and power back to oneself. And this travel surely did more than anything else. Love for our country, love for one another, and love for our fellow Indians. Power from within and without with the enormity of responsibilities. We are greatly beholden to you. And what better way to end this great journey called Bharat Darshan than in this historic Darbar Hall with a grand finale of having this priceless opportunity to share some vignettes and experiences to the first citizen of the country. Thank you very much. Truly humbled.
May I request the Honorable President of India, Shri Pranam Mukherjee, to address the gathering. At the very outset, I welcome all of you to this historic hall, which is known as Darbar Hall. As you are noticing around you, the magnificent columns, the great dome, and also portraits of some of the illustrious Indians who shaped the contemporary India. And this hall has witnessed many momentous changes in our national life. I am glad to have this opportunity of inviting young men and women who are going to be at the helm of all the affairs of our country for the next 30-35 years. When you have entered into this most important civil service, which is Indian Administrative Service, and after completion of your training, I understand it is quite exhaustive, in-depth and perceptive training procedures and programs, you will be posted in your assigned states and will begin your administrative career. Some of you may reach at the pinnacle, but many, most of you will have very major responsibilities either in the states or at the federal government. Indian civil servants from its inception, if I remember correctly, the first Indian civil servant, there were civil servants even long before that, was Rabindranath Tagore's elder brother, Satyendranath. He was the first Indian to be successful in this competitive examination and got this assignment in 1869. And since then, this practice is going on with little bit interruption during the two world wars. And after independence, the service was converted into Indian Administrative Service. I will conclude by reminding we have very oft quoted quotation of Mahatma Gandhi, our father of nations. He said this to everybody who were in the role of the policy makers. I quote, this is the talisman which Mahatma Gandhi gave to us. I quote, when you are in doubt or when the self becomes too much with you, recall the face of the poorest and the weakest man whom you may have seen and ask yourself if this day you contemplate is going to be of any use for him? Will he gain anything by it? Will it restore him to control over his own life and destiny? In other words, will it lead to Swaraj for the hungry and spiritually starving millions, then you will find your doubt and yourself melting away." Unquote. Young friends, 
remember this talisman of a man who was less than 95 years 95 pound in weight and who could galvanize whole india from himalaya to kannakumari ka from mizoram to gujarat without aid of television radio by his simple strong moral courage and conviction thank you ladies and gentlemen honorable uh, president of india sir it is my proud privilege today to extend this vote of thanks on behalf of the lal bahadur shastri national academy of administration and the 2014 batch of the indian administrative service and royal bhutan civil service so first of all we would thank you for taking this valuable time out of your busy schedule for us and then we also thank you for sharing your wisdom and experiences on wide range of topics such as the transformation of indian economy and the challenges is going to pose us and the very valuable advice at the end on how we should cope up but sir uh, on our part we assure you that the message which you have given to us today and not only like in in the in terms of the words which you have spoken to us today but also through your actions which you have undertaken throughout your long and illustrious career in the public service is going to be instrumental in shaping us and developing us into people servants and sir in the moments of of doubt which we will face during our career i'm sure we will keep on looking at you for as a source of our inspiration as our president thank you sir